A gaggle of Spec Miatas raced to the green in 2007, and the battle for the lead was on. Andy Cadell in white and Brandon Rappelberg in blue led the pack right from the green. Cadell edged past for the point, was second and third on his bumper, and on lap four, Rappelberg got a great run and took the lead back around the outside of turn one. The battle for fourth got a little sideways. Watch this. Steve Guerrero in the number 44 took the shortcut, but shot across the grass and rejoined the fight, only losing one spot. On the final lap, Cadell made his move for the lead, but he was too hot, and off he went. And Rampelberg swept to the checkers, and after finishing behind Cadell in 06, it was sweet redemption and a very special victory lap. was created to provide a relatively low-cost platform for racing the ever-popular Mazda Miata. And in only three short years of national competition, it's one of the most popular of all classes. Now, a guy who's riding that wave right into his first run-ups is former World Challenge competitor Tommy Olivier. And if you believe the old adage, if to finish first, first you must finish, in over 400 starts, he's only failed to see the checker nine times. But Eric Foss is a guy he's got to deal with in his third runoffs. He is four for four this year in the Midwestern Division. He's riding his own momentum wave coming in to Topeka. But then a guy everybody's talking about is young Mark Drennan. What a season he's had on his way to the Southern Pacific Division Championship. Six wins and eight starts, and to cover his bases, he's driving last year's gold medal winning car. Well, Greg, Spec Miata will certainly provide spectacular racing here today, and in the mix will be Charlie James. He won the Midwest Division with three victories. His third visit here to the runoff gives him the track knowledge to be a genuine contender. Now, young Blake Clements has shown speed here before, winning the pole in 2006. Two victories this year in the Southwest Division shows he still has the pace to be a factor. And a young driver in the field today is someone who's always impressed me, young Justin Hall. He's won many categories in pro racing, always a factor. I think today he will spring a surprise. Welcome to the 45th running of the Sports Car Club of America's National Championship Runoffs and for the third consecutive year at Heartland Park, Topeka in Topeka, Kansas. Great to have you with us everybody. Speed, very pleased to be bringing you the runoffs once again and today the action will unfold in Spec Miata. Over the years, as the cost of many classes escalates, a few years ago, a big effort was made to rein in the cost of some classes and making them spec categories. And in only three short years, this has become one of the most popular of all of the national level classes and certainly some of the most exciting racing at the runoffs. And Calvin Fish, as we think about these spec Miatas, we have to think about what they're going to be like on Heartland Park Topeka's track. Well, it's going to be spectacular here this afternoon, Greg. We've got two fast straightaways down through these two sections. Expect drafting battles here, but through these sets of corners, expect them to be using all of the racetrack and more. They're going to be cutting the curbs, that is for sure. It's going to be a lot of fun to watch. Now we talk about the class itself. Tell us a little bit about it specifically. Well, this Spec Miata class debuted here in 2006. Essentially low-cost, production-based race cars. Five different generations of the Miatas with different sets of restrictions. They all run on Toyo tires. And even though it's only been three years in existence on the national level, some great stories evolving. And with those, let's check in first with John Bisignano. Well, guys, Steve Gorion has had one heck of a season. He's had five track records, including very difficult circuits like Watkins Glen, Lime Rock, and Pocono. Now, last year he finished fourth here, not something he was happy with at all. But with the success he's had this year, he's looking for nothing less but the win. For more, let's go down to my pit partner, Justin Bell. Aaron McSpedden actually started racing at 16. Nothing that unusual in that in SCCA racing. But the smart thing that he did was become an auto tech because you have to prepare these cars to a very high standard yourself. And when I said to him, this is, he told me it's the fourth generation car that he's built. And when I told him, uh, when I asked him what the future was of, the, of this racing for him, he said, you know, each of us comes up with a clever little thing to do to our car, but he wouldn't tell me what it is. And in racing like this, I guess his background as an auto tech and his current job as working for a, an engineering company is going to stand him in great stead. Well, I would certainly think so. Sometimes the difference between a win and being out of the medals is preparation. And Auto Tech is going to help you do that very well when we come back 18 laps to determine our national champion in Spec Miata.
45th National Championship runoffs for the Sports Car Club of America. In the middle of our first day of action of three 25 National Championship classes to be determined, and all of them right here on speed, and Spec Miata is off on their pace and parade laps. A good field in terms of numbers, a great field in terms of depth and talent, and let's take a look at that starting lineup right now. We'll show it to you off on the left, and uh, Calvin incredibly close. The top eight in this one covered by less than a second. Yeah, and the big surprise there is not in that top eight, is our 2007 champ, Brad Rampelberg. We talked about him getting a late start on the season. That's shown in qualifying. Can he use his experience to get back to the front of the pack today? Yeah, he's been a little bit busy running the MX-5 Cup. When you win in this category, Mazda gives you a full ride in the MX-5 Cup. And a guy that he's been racing against pretty intensely is our pole sitter, the 28 of Eric Foss. As a matter of fact, Eric, uh, if he has, I think, just a very decent finish even at the finale in Laguna, wins the championship. He just starts that race, I believe. He clinches to a tremendous season for Eric, and he'd love to add that national championship to that tally here today. And, of course, one of the things that uh, this class, being a spec class, it runs on a spec tire, which has his uncle a little bit fits. <laughs> yeah, because his uncle is uh, the main... Uh manager for Huger tires and these guys run on Toyo so he may see his nephew uh, do well here today but not on his tires. Some other interesting stories of course let's check in one more time with Biz. Hey guys you know how Mazda loves to brag that there are more Mazdas raced every weekend than any other manufacturer well a lot of that is due to spec Miata there's 28 cars starting here but at some weekends there's some 40 cars will take the field well I'll tell you that's a one heck of a product endorse endorsement for Spec Miata and for the manufacturer Miata itself. So more from Justin Bell. Well I've been lucky enough to actually race a Spec Miata a couple of times down in Florida and I'll tell you this there's one word to sum it up and that is momentum. When you're watching these guys go around they're racing each other but every mistake every little lift of the throttle where they're not supposed to and every sort of bump every two wheels off is like a no-no four wheels off and about six guys will go by so when it comes to this kind of racing they're going to be very very close all the way around but they're going to have to take really great risks to go by each other so i think it's a really good thing they got fenders on these cars <laughs> my opinion is this is going to be one of the most fun races to watch for this whole weekend and Justin, it looks a little bit breezy down there, so I would think uh, they're going to be fighting some of this wind. I mean, uh, you know, actually the wind is a, is a factor more in formula cars. With these cars, all it's going to do is slowly slow you down as you come onto the pit straight here. So it's going to be an interesting one. Maybe it will make people a little shakier on their tires. The proof will be in the watching. That's a fact. You can see those flags standing absolutely straight out. It is windy here. It's really picked up since this morning, so it's going to be interesting to see. And All right, here we go. Green flag is out. Spec Miata's national championship runoff is underway. And a big move there. Foss fighting to hang on and does. And actually, he got some help as the 71, right, or 77 of Valifar really moved up with him and sort of ended up being a nice buffer for an attack. Here we go. Foss oh, leads it already. On the outside, this could get a nice save. great save. Blake Clemens, who started on the front row, did not get the start he was looking for. That was the number 12 of Mark Drennan. That's the car that Rampelberg won with last year. So Drennan puts himself even further behind the eight ball here in the early going. And now he's trying to go. There's a bump right there as well. Here we go. One off in the dirt. Can he blend back in? You have to be so careful. It's a train of cars here in this action. Voss has got the start that he was looking for. He's got a couple of car lengths. If it, oh, oh, look at this. He talked about using all of the racetrack and more. That's he had incredible to be 10 stuff. feet into the inside and into the dirt. Hall. <laughs> well, that's what you got to do sometimes to stay close. But you see, that's what Justin talked about, that one little mistake there, if you will. And look at the gap that's opened up to the cars up in front. Now you've got to really put your head down and try and catch that train and it's quickly disappearing in front of you. Thomas Olivier in the number 10 machine trying to make up for some lost ground. He got there on the first lap. Justin Hall uses all of the curb and more. We're going to see that all day long. Olivier and Justin Hall, they were really leaning on each other. Meanwhile, here's the 43, John Phillips. He's back in the pack just a little bit, but you can see intense racing no matter where you look up against the 20 of Chris Prey. And then the number 12. And there's the number 44 of Gory Aaron. So we're moving a little bit further up toward the front. Valifar has got the lead away from Foss, so he takes the lead as we end the first lap. Can Foss come back here? Down this long straightaway, picking up the slipstream. Now we'll start to close. 
Dallafar qualified six last year and finished in seven, so I think he's looking for something. Look at this now. That's Gory Aaron trying to go with Dallafar and see if he can draft by and pick up that second spot, but Foss, having none of that, turns in and uh, creates a little bit of a wedge and slots right back into second. But Blake Clemens right there in that white number six sitting in the four spot has joined this battle. Foss certainly made his intentions known there as they ended that really high-speed chicane, turns one and two. But Valifar in these early going is certainly hooked up. Now, the one thing is, you want to set your car up for 18 laps. You don't want to burn the tires down too early. How much is Sammy using up in that 77 machine right now? Tell you, the 0-2 right there of Henry Van Verst had a great three corners on this lap. When he crossed the line, he was in ninth. When he got to the exit of three, he was in seventh. So that green and black and yellow Miata right there, what a couple of corners right there and taking advantage, trying to move up just a little bit. That should put him now up into the seventh spot with Phillips and the 20 of Christopher. Chip has a lot of experience, but mainly in high horsepower cars. He finished second in T1 back in 2001 at the runoffs. Look at these guys side by side, almost trading paint there. The number 43 of John Phillips. In that battle, a couple of cars behind them dropping wheels. Here we go. And they managed to uh, hold it together right there. Boy, this is some great racing. Again, Chris Prey right in that scrum. And that is the, now we go up to the front. And that is the 28 of Foss. It's gotten back around Valifar with Gory Aaron and Clemens. Third and fourth onto the front straight. These two breaking away a little bit. They'll certainly tow each other down this long front straight away. Third and fourth spots will try and pick up that draft. Lower horsepower cars. You should pick up that draft a little bit earlier. Here comes Balafar once again to the inside. Takes the position easily. They've just got to work with each other right now. You don't want to get too aggressive. Start trading paint and damaging the race car. So Valifar in the e-bargain Miata doing a great job in the early going. Running with Foss in that Team Safe Racer entry. And then right behind them, the 44 of Gory Aaron having a solid run, the driven performance machine, buzz through espresso stop, entry. Clements now in fourth, started on the front row, had a disastrous first half a lap, but he settled back down, he's caught the leader, so long way to go. Oh, there you go, little uh, bump drafting unfolding, heading down into turn number six. So Valifar getting a little bit of the chrome horn from Foss, but he hangs on and a little bit of a margin opening up now between those two, Gory Aaron and Clements. Dale Shoemaker had a great birthday present on his 55th birthday. It was to a racing car driver's school, but Dale, I've got to ask you, why'd you wait so long? I've always wanted to race, it was time. Well, time, okay, fine, but you chose the most competitive class in SCCA. Couldn't you make it easier on yourself? I like competition. Competition is good. All right, when the competition is in the rain, going up through some S's, do you ever think, what am I doing here? Oh, no, I'm in a car with a roll cage, not a problem. Okay, well, that helps from coming off a motorcycle, which was your previous love. What about the expense? Is it more expensive, less expensive compared to the fun? Where are you? Uh, it's, you can't beat it for the fun. Price is just right. And your goal, your first SCCA championship. What do you want to do this weekend? I want to stay out of trouble and finish as high as I possibly can. I can understand why he's not all, uh, he's a little bit more comfortable in a car with a cage if he's a former bike racer. And uh, But that, his comment right there is really why this class was created. It started on a regional level and then moved into the national level. And it was to give a relatively cheap way to go racing. And uh, we've seen the racing unfolding thus far. Big fun. And these two are having some of the most of it. Sammy Valifar, the black 77, and Eric Foss, the white 28, your pole sitter. And uh, that little margin that was there between Foss and the 44 of Gory Aaron is gone. Gory Aaron and Clemens have reeled them right back in again. And then it is a couple of seconds back to Drennan, McSpadden, and the rest of the field. But Drennan ran a lap about three or four tenths quicker than the leaders on that last lap, so he has the potential to add to this group. Watching them as they come through that very quick left right. Oh, and Foss got a really nice run. Let's see if he does anything with it. Nope, be elected at that point not to. And that may have been because Gory Aaron was so close. 
And Valifar continues to hold sway up front. Justin? Well, you know, Valifar definitely considers himself, you know, the uh, independent taking on the big boys, if you can, in this series. And, you know, he finished set sixth here last year, but he did finish second at the NASA runoffs. So he's got a lot of momentum. He's been a top front runner all, all year. So what he's looking for in this race, an interesting point his crew chief just told me, these tires do not go off. So they can lean on this all the way from start to finish, which I think you're going to see this all the way through the race, Greg. Well, that's what makes it so exciting, absolutely. And you see right now, Gory Aaron is on the uh, outside, the left shoulder, if you will, on the 28 of Foss as they head down into turn two, Biz. Well, I was talking to the 28 driver on the grid, and one thing that he really emphasized strongly is that they have done their homework for this track. They came here for a private test session, and they've run two nationals, and they use both of those racings for races for further test sessions. When it comes right down to it, there's no substitute for testing and experience on a circuit, especially when you're running for a championship. Absolutely, and Calvin, we just saw a classic example of what Justin talked about with the momentum. Gory Aaron tried that line, was on the outside. By the time it all settled, he'd lost six, seven lengths. He lost a huge amount of time there as Blake Clements was really putting the pressure on him. So here we see him coming off turn seven and heading down that long stretch. But uh, Blake Count Clements is a fast young driver, so uh, he's certainly going to be putting the pressure on him soon. Gory Aaron and Clements having a great scrap right now. Biz for third. Well, I'll tell you, the 77 car has been through everything all weekend long. And the 44 car right along with him. Both of them have been just doing tremendous maintenance on the car. Now, Calvin, I want you to maybe explain this better than I can in the pit lane. They have replaced the cam angle and they have re-censored the crank angle. The car was misfiring. So every time that they went out and hurt, hit a certain RPM, it was like putting on the brakes for the 44. Obviously, they have solved that problem. Well, these engines are obviously very sensitive to having the right timing and setup on them. And if he had some kind of misfire, they have the technology and the electronics to actually diagnose what is wrong with these cars and correct it. So he's going to need it firing on all cylinders here if he's going to get a gold medal here this afternoon, that's for sure. And when Justin was talking about the independent versus the big boys, the big boys would be there are some prep shops that handle a number of cars. And of course, that gives you a few more options. But Balafar, he's doing it by himself and so far doing it mighty well. We are in the midst of the 45th running of SCCA's National Championship runoffs. 25 classes will determine national champions, but we are in the middle of a great run in what is called Spec Miata. The very popular Mazda Miata run with spec components, including tires. So the advantage, it has to come from the skill of the driver. And we are seeing a great display of that throughout the field. And of course, certainly up front right now, Watching this battle as Valifar, Foss, the 44 of Gory Aaron, and the 6 of Clements are continuing to break free just a little bit from Drennan. That margin, uh, even though Drennan turned a very quick lap, a couple of laps back, has stabilized once again at about three seconds back to that group. But this group up front, Cal, what a show they're putting on. Well, they're laying down identical lap times right now, and that's why the gap isn't changing. So, as Justin mentioned, you can really hammer these Toyo tires, which is great because I thought maybe Sammy was taking too much about his race car earlier in the event. All right, moving back a little bit deeper in the top 10 right now, there's a look at the number three, the silver machine of Justin Hall with John Phillips, and uh, the gentleman right behind them is the number 20 of Chris Prey. This is a good group. As a matter of fact, now, actually, the 43 of John Phillips and Prey have swapped some spots, but Justin Hall, look at that lap time. He's running a 54-4. That's quicker than the leaders ran the last lap. And sometimes that comes down to just getting a beautiful toe down these long straights. Absolutely. You need to time that draft and make advantage of it in terms of your lap time. But he is a very fast young driver. I've been very impressed with him. Here we see the leaders once again going side by side through that chicane. Now, can Gory Aaron take advantage of this and get up to second spot? Balafar Sammy. defending. He did. He tried oh, to get he's going to throw away. it in there, Cal. Here comes Stephen Gorier and down to the inside. And meanwhile, Foss up front gets a little bit sideways. Look at Blake Cam Clements now to the inside, trying to take both of these drivers. Three abreast almost for a moment, exiting three. And Gorier and finally completes it. Clements is going to go for it and then realizes if I do that, I'm going to hit him. So he checked up a little bit. Gorier and Clements just that fast. Valifar comes by the start finish line in the lead. Four corners later, he's fourth. 
Beautiful driving by all three of these guys just to keep it clean and not get into each other. Here's the pass once again. Side by side and uh, Fast just hangs on around the outside this time. Normally that doesn't work. Normally the guy on the inside, Valifar, should have taken the advantage through here. But he didn't push the issue. Good clean driving. And just that little lift to let Foss through is what allowed Gurrieran to get the run. And then when Gurrieran got alongside, Clements got the run. That's how it unfolds in Spec Miata. And the other side of the story is, as we're watching Valifar, is he going to try a move here on Clements? He's trying the outside, a little tougher to do in that part of the track. But look who is closed up now. All four of those guys, their lap time's off because of the side-by-side -side action of Mark Drennan. is closing in on the number 12 and is bringing the 7 of Aaron McSpadden right along for the ride. Well, Drennan has been fast, certainly, and McSpadden's been laying down some very fast lap times as well. All of these front six are running laps in the mid to low 54 second range. That's one minute 54s, but look at the gap that Eric Foss now has as he crosses the stripe. Over a second, that's the biggest lead we've seen here today. There's Clements. That is the battle for the final medal, and here comes Valifar down to the inside. Got a great run and popped to that inside at about the perfect time. And that has allowed Valifar through. So right now, John Bisignano, Blake Clements has been as high as second and is back to fourth. Well, remember, uh, he qualified second, so he's used to being up front. And actually, he was going to tell, he told me that he was going to wait until mid-race before he really started pushing. He has really been working on the heat senses in the tires. They have uh, four cycles on these uh, tires, and they have shaved them to a spec that they've never been shaved to before. So he's somewhat on new territory out there, but he liked it because he qualified second with that particular shaving, and then they reshaved him one more time right before the start of this race. Watch him a little bit further on into the race, just right half distance. Well, there's a real science to that shaving of these tires and putting it through the different heat cycles. So you have maximum performance for the race here today. There's the number 40 of Charles James. You can see he's got a headlight popped up and that's the reason. Yeah, he went for a rough ride and it uh, loosened that baby right up. He's lucky to get away with this one without any further damage. That's a big one coming off through that final chicane there. And uh, yeah, he's back on track. He's dropped off just a little bit, obviously, but the battle at the front continues to be stout for second, third, and fourth. But right now, Eric Foss making good his escape at this point at any rate, but a lot of racing yet to go. We are back at Heartland Park, Topeka. The Spec Miata National Championship underway. A look back at what's unfolded thus far. Pole sitter Eric Foss in that white Miata to the left was able to hang on with Sammy Valifar tucked in right behind as they swept down into turn one. But it didn't take long. Valifar getting a great toe. Popped to the inside, Cal, and was able to take that spot away. Beautiful move there, and they've been doing it all day long. But then, almost uh, a couple of laps later, Foss decided maybe he could try the long way around, and he made that work. And that lift right there as Valifar let him through. Watch Guerrerian, that third car, he comes right through and suddenly picks up the second spot. Good clean driving and total trust in one another at high speed through that chicane. And back to uh, the action as it is unfolding right now. There is the 28 of Eric Foss, that team safe racer, Mazda Miata. And if he could pull this one off and win it, and then, of course, as you said, Calvin, he just has to start at Laguna. He can win two substantial titles in the matter of a week, and that will be very special indeed. Dropping a little bit further back in the pack. We've got a tremendous battle going on right here. There's the 0-2 of Henry Van Verst. Phillips right behind him, and Van Verst is taking a big run right now at the number three of Justin Hall, sitting in seventh. That's that silver Miata. Well, he's had a tremendous run here. He started 15th to make his way through the pack all the way up to 7th. So he's having a great run here. And we see another guy using the grass here through that quick chicane. We talked about Justin Hall's potential. He has done a lot of running this year. His uh, wife and he had a baby this year. So he said, I'm being kind of distracted. But nonetheless, he is always quick. He's running Speed World Challenge before. He's also running Coney Challenge this year. Just an amazing young driver. Probably lack of sleep. <laughs> <laughs> nice to get away from home and get some rest. Exactly. I think that number one that we saw bouncing through the uh, dirt over in the chicane is our defending champ, Brad Rampelberg. 
not running the car he won with last year and uh, obviously not getting much running in this type of car at all this season and that lack of development showing as he's mired back at 12th right now and here is Hall still trying to defend from Van Verst who's looking inside outside and now just tucks right back in again and uh, 43 John Phillips right there coming into your screen the white Miata with the two stripes behind oh and Hall is off good save and Van Verst dropped two tires oh, that target foot, fixation it? maybe Kept his foot in it, and you talked about Rampelberg running further back in the pack. These cars have to be massaged on all season long. You can't just grab a race car, come here at the runoffs, and expect to run up front, even for last year's champion. And we jump up to fifth spot right now as Drennan continues. One to try and reel in that group up front and really get into that battle for the medals here. But the problem for him is seven. Aaron McSpatton refuses to uh, let him just get away and do that. So he's got to kind of keep an eye on that mirror and watch what uh, McSpatton's doing. McSpatton's just being a pest right now. He won't leave him alone <laughs> exactly. and let him focus on running some quick laps. He's having to defend that position all of the time. McSpatton in the applied racing technology entry. Drennan in the Brookstone Builders. Miata. There's the 06 as we drop back a little bit further. The battle over 21st. Phil Mather. He has got Craig Jansen right behind him. This is what you see so often in this category of racing. Many of the racing classes here is way back in the pack. You still find somebody to battle with, and you've got yourself a great race. And you, after all, you're running at the runoffs. And you're going to go for it as hard as you can, re regardless of where you're running. But you can see Mather's time off quite a bit from what they're running up front. Foss there goes Foss. The line there, still has a healthy lead. 1.3 seconds off over Gurriera, and who's now second. Balafar back up to third, and Drennan now fourth. Something happened here because there is the number six of Clements, who was fourth not long ago, and he has slipped back to the sixth spot right now. It's our 2006 pole sitter. Yeah. And uh, I thought he was just sitting there looking in pretty good shape, but he must have had some kind of issue, some kind of off. Cost him a lot of ground. He's going to struggle to get back up to the podium now from the sixth spot. And he's starting to attack McSpadden, and McSpadden will know now exactly how the number 12 Adrenaline was feeling with McSpadden being that best. That's what he's going to be dealing with right now. But we are working lap 12 of 18, so six laps to go. That's a lot of racing yet to unfold in Spec Miata. Welcome back to Heartland Park, Topeka for the 45th running of the SCCA National Championship runoffs right here on Speed, the place for racing without a doubt. And this is one of the great events, often referred to as the Olympics of Motorsports, the SCCA National Championships. They call them the runoffs, and that is exactly what it is. After a full season of racing in nine different divisions, the top drivers in the divisions get invited to the runoffs, and this is the battle for the gold and the National Championship in Spec Miata. Eric Foss continues to lead out front, but we have got some tremendous racing all over the place and once again we're taking a look at this battle here is number three Justin Hall now there is a classy piece of driving from the gentleman we met earlier in one of our pieces the number 98 of Dale Shoemaker realized that this is his first time he's brand new to this after racing motorcycles and that he really wasn't on the pace and he just got way out of the way and let these guys come through class act absolutely you could see in his mirrors the leaders were coming through and these guys are now duking it out Chip Van Verst, Henry Van Verst, should I say, making a strong run here on Justin Hall. Around the outside, takes the position easily before the chicane. Oh, now he gets wide. I don't think he break for the chicane. That's why he had a big lead going in there. Wow. Totally overcooked the entry. Got away with it, but lost a couple of positions. Yeah, Chris Prey now has slotted through. That's the black number 20 got around Van Verst. And the 43 of Phillips did as well, so it was impressive for the first half of it. Yeah. <laughs> Looked good for a while on the telemetry as well. Wow, you can carry some speed in there. However, you're you get to make that, it out the other side. You get that certain point in the corner, and suddenly you're mumbling, no, that's not it. Yeah. This predictive lap would have been good. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Now, so Hall now finds himself, uh, he thought maybe, all right, with that happening, I'll be in good shape. Not so much because the 43 of John Phillips, boy, once he got around the skating, 0-2 of Van Verst. Look at Phillips. Oh, there you go. Come on, buddy, pick it up or I'm going to have to come by. You, did you see the hand signal? Yeah, they're saying, come on, let's work together. Let's bump draft a little bit, try and catch that pack in front of us. Justin Hall, a rookie here at the runoffs, doing a great job. Up to seventh. 
John Phillips certainly has a fast race car as well. And there's no. going to be another bump, I think, coming. <laughs> You can really work it. If you just give a little tap going down these straightaways, you will gradually inch away from the pack behind you. Justin gets a little bit wide there through turn 11. Boy, Phillips is all over him at this point. You have to wonder whether how patient Phillips will be if he thinks that he really has a much faster car. Oh, you see that little bobble took him awfully close to that wall. Expect me out as use all of the road there. Look at that way offline, more than we've seen all day long here. Just trying to get as much momentum off that final corner down this long straightaway. Just opening up the steering wheel. Try not to scrub any speed and maximize your RPMs on the exit. Down through one, two, boy, and right through there. Number Ooh. three hall is very quick. Look Dancing on the, the edge. Road. That is using it all. In the dust at the end of the curbing and look at this side-by-side -side action now. Christopher Prey having a good run here with Henry Van Verst. Prey hanging on. Van Verst, the auto technique entry right there. And then the number 10 of Tommy Olivier. Oh, the 35 having himself a bit of a ride. Jimmy Underhill on the UnderhillLaw.com Mazda Miata. Gathers it back up. Take a look at what happened here, running with the 15 of James York. Oh, just gets it loose on the entry. That's quite a ride there. Turned in, the back end was already loose as he's trying to go further to the right. Just no chance of catching that one. And there is Eric Foss, that safe racer, Miata. He is in the lead, but you can see they are using up a lot of racetrack in the 44 of Guerrero using even more, throwing dust clouds up, trying to run down the leader for a shot at gold. Racing is all about aspirations and dreams, and sometimes they come true as they are just about to for Chip Van Vers. Chip, you've got an amazing 2009 season planned, it looks like. Absolutely. I met uh, Randy Moss about a year ago, and we started uh, working a deal on the Craftsman Truck Series. So uh, next year in 2009, I'm going to do a limited, limited uh, time there, and it all started here in SCCA. It started, I started club racing and, and Mustangs and Miatas, and, and this is where it all started. SCCA is, is what got me there. It's the greatest thing. Well, that is a tremendous story, and obviously SCCA, you know, for many years it has been a springboard to greater things, but to hook up with one legendary football player as he puts together his first major race team ownership and to do it at the level of uh, the truck series, that's pretty impressive. It really is, and uh, that's what this racing is all about, just learning your trade, learning your craft, and hopefully you can go on to bigger and better things, whether it's as a driver, a crew chief, or maybe a team owner. Van Verst had qualified in the eighth spot, but I'll tell you, they have been in the middle of, I mean, he's been as high as seventh, and uh, now he's sitting back in the tenth spot, and it's just because of the intensity that unfolds in this Spec Miata class right now. And every time he gets a little bit of a run going, Chris Prey or somebody like that comes right along and then gets underneath, and that's how it goes. But you might as well get used to that if you're going to run trucks, I suppose, huh? Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> this is similar to the truck action that you'd see on an oval, just action all day long, side by side. And right now, this racetrack, if you get offline, there's a lot of marbles that I'm noticing with the amount of races we've had here today. They'll clean the track this evening, but we've got a handful more events here to get through to the end of day one. Well, some of it, it's marbles, but these cars that have a little bit more ground clearance, when they drop those inside tires on the inside of the curb in the dirt, they're hauling a bunch of rock and junk up, too, and that certainly makes things interesting. Once again, a little bobble by Chris Prey, and it got him running way wide and maybe cost him that run and uh, taken a, a shot for that position back a little bit further in the pack. Craig Jansen just makes the pass on Phil Mather. That battle, we've seen it before for 21st. These guys are racing intensely. Every position here at the runoffs is being hard fought. You don't come all this way, go through a season in your division to be here and give anything away. So you know when you get here, whether it's for first, whether it's for 10th, whether it's for 20th on back, you're going to be fighting all day long. 
And the fun thing about the Sports Car Club of America, and the key word there is club, is at the end of the day you pull the helmets off and you go sit with that guy that you just battled with and you bench race and laugh and talk about your season and the great uh, race you just had. It truly is a very special fraternity here in the Sports Car Club of America. And, you know, one of the things you see so often is, you know, I hear stories about a guy who had a problem with a car, something's not working, and a competitor will give him a part so he can get out and run and then knowing that guy might beat him. But the whole story there is it's the competition and the camaraderie. That's what SCCA is all about. That's right. I mean, uh, you want to be out there and you want to beat the best. You don't just want to stroke at home. You want everyone out there on the racetrack. And if you pick up one of those medals, it'll mean a whole lot more. Watching this great battle again, 20th, 21st, 22nd. That is the area here. Keeping an eye on the monitors, though, and Eric Foss, who a little while ago had about a second and a half lead over Gary Aaron, and finds himself now with a half second lead. So things getting very, very close up front as well. So we're keeping an eye on that for you folks and watching it. But this is such a good scrap right now between these two, Jansen and Mather. I just love the way the drivers throughout this field today. I mean, with fenders, you can really lean on someone. You can get dirty, you can get aggressive, but they're just giving each other, other enough racing room, and that is really key, and it makes it for a lot more fun. Hey, look at the lead. As you talked about that gap for the lead, it is really closed down here. Did traffic play a part in that? I don't know, but Eric Foss is certainly feeling the pressure. Well, they just came up on Jennifer Watkin, and uh, Foss was able to duck around. And for a minute, it looked like he might get held up, and uh, Corey Aaron might have himself a run, but then Foss popped at just the right moment and blunted that. But as I said, it went uh, from 1.4 seconds a couple laps back. The last lap, it was under a second, and this lap, it's down to 0.4 officially when they came by the start-finish line, so it's that close. And Gory Aaron has driven a superb race, Cal. He really has, but Foss is doing a tremendous job. Beautiful driving there through that section of the racetrack. Four, five, six, and seven. Well, Biz, uh, the leader, Foss, lost a little ground, but he's opened up a little bit of a gap again. Well, we are actually with his crew chief, uh, Chris James. Chris, you, uh, you actually prepare three other cars here this weekend. What's the difference between what's on the 28 cars and your other customer? Uh, yes, me and Derek Gresham, we're the crew chiefs on uh, Team Safe Racer. Uh, mostly all the setups are the same on all four cars. Uh, everybody's driving style is a little different, so we have to set up the cars for each person's driving style. So Eric has the most uh, experience. Uh, Eric does have a lot of experience. Yes, he does. I'll tell you guys, they've already got an offer for someone to buy this car. Eric can't crash it now. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's key, obviously. And Rampelberg, when he won last year and sold his car, the guy who bought that is having himself a strong race sitting in fourth. So there certainly is a good impetus to buy one of these that's already been well, well sorted. Better still, buy a gold medal winner. Welcome back, everybody. Heartland Park, Topeka, into our final two laps. That is the margin between gold and silver. Silver and bronze, a bit bigger. These two have decided to make it mano a mano, and they have put on a great show. Foss from pole. He's led. He's been as far back as third. Meanwhile, remember number six, Blake Clements, who at one point was in second. He has dropped back a bit, but now is working his way back up through the front. He has caught the number 12 of Drennan and gone around McSpadden. McSpadden has really had a great run here. Cal started 13th and has jumped up into this group. Amazing run to make that sort of progress through a field as tough as it is here today at the runoff. So obviously didn't qualify to his true potential, but in race trim, he has a great race car and doing a tremendous job in the seven machine. Putting a big, big amount of pressure on the six of Clements, who was doing the same to the 12 of Drennan. This is the battle for fourth. And you never give it up here, even though we're in our final lap and a half. Anything happens up front, this becomes a battle for a medal. It's just that simple. And look at that, Clements again. Boy, using every ounce of the racetrack and then some. Trying to get a run, trying to find a way around Mark Drennan. Once again, that is the car that uh, won this race in the heads of Brad Rappelberg last year. Drennan giving it a very solid run at this point down into the section we call the autocross. It's just basically try and get apex to apex, shortest distance between these corners. And then right here, Cal, don't you, you, you give up the exit of that turn because you've got to get a run onto this front straight. You have to, but it's difficult. When you've got cars right behind you, you want to swing out wide, but that just opens the door and it makes it really inviting for the guy behind you, particularly with only a lap or two to go, to really just make a move. So it's a really tricky, you're looking in your rear view mirror to the last possible moment. Ooh. I think there was some contact there, that's for sure. I thought I heard a misshift between one of these two guys. 
But that was close. I mean, you don't want to be doing that as a high-speed section of the racetrack. That's that little kingle will catch these guys out now and again. One will zig, one will zag, and uh, you get it wrong. Boy, in that bump, when you run way tight to the inside over that drag strip, it really launches you. Here you go. Maybe that's where Drennan missed the shift. Could have been. I think Clements wasn't expecting that, and suddenly he was right on his bumper there, literally. And now he gets back to it again. Again, Clements dropping those tires off the track on the inside of these curves, just trying to do anything he can. Super close, and of course, from Expadden, he's just waiting for Looks these the guys. Inside. Waiting for these guys. Oh, and there he goes. That time he got Brennan. Drennan floated way out. He took the bait, got it a little too deep, didn't he? He did. He just pushed wide there, couldn't get down to his apex. So good, clean driving by these guys. Blake Clements has a run, but Drennan's coming back. We know he's got a fast race car. Wow, that was a. If he holds on to this, this will be impressive. Side by side into that chicane. Look at McSpadden as well, all three of them. Harry Stuff keeping it on the island. Good and job by Drennan there. Executed beautifully by all three of them. They were, you, you know, you see that and you go, there's no way that's going to work. And these three made it work without contact. Very, very good racing. Now, don't be surprised to see Blake Clements here try and make a surprise move on Drennan through these final set of corners. All right, quickly, here you go. Checking in. This is our leader, Foss. Gorier and is that close, but it's not going to be enough. Foss is going to bring it home, wins the national championship. Incredible story for Eric Foss. Gorier and coming alongside. He wins the silver medal. Nicely done there. Valifar just comes through and picks up the bronze now. You this is the 0 time. 2 of Van Verst back in ninth. You can see some damage. That's how close quarters this racing action has been. He's going to hang on. And Drennan did hang on to fourth. And they, dem oh, McSpadden demoted Clements a spot in that last couple of corners. Well, you'd have to think that maybe Blake wow. made a move that didn't work, and then he lost another position. So there you have it, folks. Beck Miata, it is incredibly close quarters racing everywhere around the track. The official margin of victory under half a second after 18 laps of running. Our seventh national championship of 2008 has been decided. It was Spec Miata, and what an awesome race. Phenomenal. Here is your top five. Foss gets the uh, gold, Guerrero the silver, Valifar the bronze, Drennan and McSpadden. Some great racing as well. And John Bisignano, Eric Foss on his way to a pro championship. Couldn't have done any better for prep. I'll tell you, congratulations, Eric. What a great run. Those, those first laps were not easy. They were all over you. Yeah, uh, it was a great run out there. Team Safe Racer just gave me an amazing car all year. It's just a privilege to run with these guys. Um, Mazda has a great ladder system, and these guys are tough. I mean, we were out there to fighting tooth and nail, and uh, managed to eat it out there at the end. Uh, it was well, what about the great battle for the lead? I mean, my gosh, you were dicing it up. You were touching all, all over each other. Tell me about it. Yeah, I don't think we were touching, but uh, we yeah, were really well, well, close. Maybe so. <laughs> yeah, just behind you. Yeah, yeah, it was close, and uh, you know, Sammy and Steve uh, were right there putting pressure on me the whole race, and uh, you know, just the car felt great. It's been good all week, and uh, it's just great to give these guys a win. They've been trying for years, and I'm just happy to be part of the team. Congratulations on a great gold medal. Let's go down to Justin with the second place finisher. Well, I'm here with Steve Gorand. It, well, it was a great race. You're looking a little bit disappointed, though. Oh, a little bit disappointed. Yeah, we came here last year and finished fourth, and I think uh, David Del Genio put a better package for me uh, together this year, and I thought we had a car that could win. We started fourth, we had some problems in qualifying with uh, the camshaft sensor and crank angle sensor, it was, the car was skipping, so I thought we could have qualified first or second, we had to start from fourth, so we had to work our way up. There you have it. It's close. We loosely walked them down at the end. Well, it was as close as, you can, as close as you can certainly get to be second. Back to you, Greg. Oh, it was an absolutely great race. And uh, you saw right there Bruce Foss from Hoosier run over and uh, give a big hug, even though he's not on his tires. Uncle's pretty proud of nephew there, Eric. Nice job. Let's take a look at our unofficial full field results. Again, you see McSpadden and Clements. They swapped spots on that last lap and that battle we were following with Phillips, Justin Hall, Chip Van Vers, Chris Ray. Just some phenomenal racing action all the way through the pack and even if you get deeper in the pack we were watching that battle with Phil Mather and Craig Jansen for 20th some great stuff unfolding deep in the pack there as well so uh, that's what Spec Miata is all about find somebody race it but there's the story I think you're defending champion Brad Rampelberg struggling all race long dropping to 27th that tells you just how competitive this class is if you're not in it all year long
And for Eric Voss, I mean, hopefully this will be a springboard to better things in his career. He's one of those guys, he doesn't have a big budget, but he has a lot of talent. And that is exactly what makes this class so special. If you don't have the budget and you have the talent, this is the spot. Maybe you can come and let people know, take a look at me. I can do something for you and your team as we move up through the ladder. And boy, did they put on a phenomenal show. Great racing and spec me out of the championship decided for Calvin Fish, John Bisignano, and Justin Bell. I'm Greg Creamer. Thanks so much for joining us here on our coverage from Speed. There's a lot more to come from the runoffs here on Speed Channel. And of course, congratulations to our medal winners, Sammy Balafar in bronze, Guerrero in the silver, and Eric Foss, the gold.